what are you doing now? Probably uh, you're sitting listening to me. Maybe you're reading the book, Introduction to Performance Studies. Maybe you have an urge to get up and have a cup of coffee or take a walk. Can these things be performances? From my point of view, they can be. Anything can be a performance. You have to treat it as a performance by applying to it certain criteria that uh, work with performances, such as what is the behavior, what is its sequence, how is it generated, how is it evaluated, what costumes do people wear, or clothes for that matter, where does the uh, behavior take place, in what circumstances, what physical environment. In other words, there's always performance questions that can be asked of any behavior. So the answer to the question, what is performance, is not so much separating out a genre to say, like, ballet is a performance, but uh, walking into your dining room is not a performance, but looking at each of these behaviors in a specific kind of way. So you can examine ballet from a non-performative point of view, simply as a sociological phenomenon, as a history of the relationship between a certain art form and its uh, political sources in uh, 17th and 18th century France, for example. And you can analyze just eating dinner as a performance, how people comport themselves, how they behave in relationship to each other during the staging of a dinner. Irving Goffman, whose work is very important to performance studies, wrote about the performances of everyday life. So he brought that into the purview of performance. The study of aesthetic performances, such as dance, theater, and music, has long been accepted as something special, a kind of refraction, reflection, imitation of ordinary reality. But I would go beyond that and say that art also creates its own reality and actively interacts with social life.